Welcome to a new vlog and I'm sitting here with Florence on my lap and we've just had a snooze together, <laughs> literally just woken up, Sunday afternoon snoozles, yes we did didn't we, the last puppy left yesterday, I don't know why I'm sounding croaky, I think I need a drink, the last puppy left yesterday and I've just made sure that I've been giving her lots of extra TLC and snuggles so um, I think she's relieved. Quite a few people have said, oh, do you think she's missing them? Is she okay? I think she's very happy. She'd got to the point where she was hiding from the little puppy because she just didn't want to feed anymore. And she didn't want to be pestered. So I think she's relieved. Nature is so funny. It's got, you know, it's just so clever how it works and how, you know, animals are just more practical than us. Us humans get terribly like attached and worried and sensitive, whereas these guys, nah, as long as she's got me, <laughs> she doesn't really, <clears throat> sorry, I'm really croaky, she doesn't really mind where she is, I might have to, uh, I'm looking for somewhere to put you so I can chat without, um, without holding you, hang on a minute, there, I've balanced you up there, I've got my pairs socks, bamboo socks on, which I was wearing with my wellies. And Arch has gone to a friend's house. Gus and Sai have gone up to London. They've gone to the Imperial War Museum together, which is just really lovely. Sai's such a great daddy. I'm very lucky. He was like, come on, Gus, I think you and I need a day together. And he knew that um, Coco and I were horsing, horsing around together and Arch was going to a friend's. So they've gone off to do that. And I have just got back, sat here, I was reading I Love You magazine. Florence, you've got really excited, haven't you? You've got really excited because I've started talking. Oh, Penn has come to join us. I actually need to bath them and groom them and get the clippers out because they are such scruff bags. Oh, here, look, we've got Granny. Well, yeah, Granny, Granny and Mummy. Mother and daughter, oh darling, I know you desperately need a clean and you've got all scratchy. <sighs> so I'm actually need to muster up the energy to bath them, get the clippers out and um, do all of that. And it's already five o'clock. So yeah, Coco and I, we have done, we've been doing all sorts of things. Yesterday morning, um, Simon and Arch were, well, in fact, they weren't playing real tennis. So I took Archie to real tennis. Um, tournament that he was playing in and I went to watch. Stop scratching, darling. It's really annoying when you scratch on my lap. It is. No, I know. I'm going to get the clippers out and we're going to have a good bath and a good a good scrub and a good pamper session. That's what we need, isn't it? We need a pamper session. Anyway, Arch was playing real tennis yesterday. I went to watch him and then yesterday afternoon I took Coco for a lesson with Santana in the trailer to Tintins and I'm just trying to get them out and about as much as we possibly can and get her loading, um, I want to say easily. <laughs> it's never, she is a stubborn, stubborn horse. Anyway, today we got there and we got back and it was just lovely because I knew that if all else failed, we could just hack there, but I didn't want to do that. But Coco is really good with her. And since Miles came again, not I keep calling him Miles, and he's called Alec, Alec Miles. Since Alec came again, you know, we know what we need to do. She does just plant herself and Coco's just got to be determined, but it's patience with her. She's got to, she's got to be in the right, you know, Anyhow, we got there and we got back and they had a clear round in the first round, which was excellent. And then um, they had one stop in the second class. Could you stop it, darling? Stop it. Stop it. Stop scratching. Mummy, will you stop chatting and will you give me a bath, please? 
yes, in a moment. Um, they had one stop in the second round and I think she just lost momentum. Um, with Santana, everything needs to be right. You've got to have the right rhythm. <laughs> You've got to be determined. And she just put in, I could see it was going to happen. Um, she just had one stop, but it was an accumulator class. And that's where you get points for every fence you jump and it's timed. And then um, there's a joke offence. And they jumped the joke fence. I actually didn't walk the course, so I didn't see the joke fence um, from the ground. I just saw it from videoing. Um, but I'll pop some of their jumping in here uh, for you to have a look how they are progressing. You are such a scruff bag. Um, so that was a very good morning. A very, very good morning. And then I got home, had something to eat, sat here and had a snooze. I woke up and I'm chatting to you. But... We've got things to do. I cannot be too lazy. But yes, the last pup left yesterday and I had a bit of a lion this morning. Coco wasn't riding that early and I didn't have to get up at six o'clock to let a puppy out. So we had a little bit of a lazy morning. We're having a lazy day, aren't we? I don't think you can see Penish about. And that's about it. You're just looking at me as if to say, oh, mummy, it's wonderful to have snuggles with you. I know. I love you guys. I love you guys. But now it's time for a pamper, for a bath, to sort you girls out so you're not the scruffiest dogs in all of Sussex. Because <laughs> currently, you are. Yes, you are. Right. Bath time, my girls. Bath time, bath time, bath time. Let's go. Mwah. Before we go and bath the dogs, I was asked to share on TikTok my outdoor sort of coats and, and what I wear when I'm out, outdoors. So this barber, I think I shared it, shared it with you when I bought it. I got it in John Lewis's. I have lived in it. I've made sure that it doesn't go near the muck heap, but it does come out doing horsey things with me. But it's really, really comfortable and I am thrilled that I bought it. Then my Lushamo welly boots, I absolutely live in these. These are the second pair I have had and the first pair lasted literally six or seven years and actually Coco still, still wears them. I didn't get rid of them. They've got a slight hole in them, but she's quite happy with that. She doesn't mind. She finds them really, really comfy. So great wellies. And then for my smarter wellies, these ones are from Fairfax and Favour and they are more of an investment piece they're not going anywhere near the muck heap my hicks and hide handbag love this such a handy little handbag and then and then and then and then let's talk hats quickly this one is from hicks and brown and i love it i wore it to cheltenham this year it goes with everything so this one i would wear if i want a slightly more elevated look from going somewhere smart um, in the countryside, then I would put this on. If I want something waterproof, this is an old favourite. I bought it in Stockley Trading in Midhurst about 10 years ago, and it does get totally squashed, but it, <laughs> it, it does the job. And it keeps my head dry, so that is handy. I always get asked about, oh, about this cap. This I bought in the Linton sheepskin shop in, in Linton in Devon. But Hicks and Hicks and Brown do similar caps to this. Love this and I wear it a lot. And then my trusty baseball cap. Now I've got a really small head. Sorry, the dogs think that we're going for a walk. So <laughs> that's what you can hear. Um, I've got a really small head and this is actually, I think they call it the a junior size or youth size and it fits perfectly. So that is my baseball cap. This handbag, not really handbag, this tote bag. This tote bag from Henrietta is just amazing. I absolutely love it. You can personalise them with whatever you want and I've got my code CHARLIE15 for you to get a discount but they are such a great size. Whether you're going to the beach, whether you're into sailing, whether you're into surfing, this is perfect for, for pony club stuff. It's a really, really useful tote. What is also really useful about it is it folds up into nothing. 
So you could just put that like flat in your suitcase and use it as a beach bag. Really handy, really handy. So thrilled with that. I think it's my most useful larger size bag. Then this coat that I bought at Cheltenham, I have worn a lot, an awful lot. And I'm really pleased I got it. So this is from Guinea London and I got it in their sale at Cheltenham. It's just really lightweight, detachable faux fur collar, which is brilliant and really, really comfy, but also a great undercoat if you um, get really cold, like in the winter, if you want another layer underneath a bigger, a bigger coat, really, really handy. So I'm thrilled with that. Right, I really have got to go and bath those dogs now. Right, it is time to clear. Actually, this one's so keen. She's just jumped up on my lap and I've got the pots behind me. I love the spring flowers. The tulips are just coming out, which is very exciting. But I thought I would just chat you through what I'm doing. So we have had, we've had a bath and I love, Florence, you're making this almost impossible for mummy. I love made kind products. I will leave them linked down below. So I've used their shampoo, their dog shampoo. And then this is their fur detangler and conditioning spray. Florence, this is not helpful. <laughs> Tess has just run off. I find one of these brushes really handy for their dogs. Now, miniature wire head dachshunds should be hand stripped. However, Penny and Florence have got really, really kind of fine fluffy coats and I used to take them to the dog groomers. The dog groomers were amazing with them, but actually for me just to take the dogs to get them clipped when it's something that I feel confident to do myself, I am saving the pennies and doing it myself. But um, if you've got a good local dog groomer, they are brilliant and they know what they're doing. I'm really lucky with these girls. They are excellent. Now, my um, clipping essentials. Hello, you're making this really hard. My master clip clippers are by far and away my absolute best. They come in a set like this. These are, um, <laughs> Florence, you're really not helping. You're so excited about being groomed, aren't you? These, when you turn them on, or when you plug them into charge, um, it says the percentage, it's difficult for you to see in daylight, but inside I can see, they're 99% charged. They are a really wonderful weight clipper and they're just effortless to use. Now, having a set of, I'm sorry, it's really distracting with her running around. <laughs> having a, um, I use a blade uh, cover too. This is the three mil one and I tend to use that. Having a spare set of blades is always a really good idea. You don't want to use blunt blades and it's really important that you oil them and this comes in a little kit. You oil them and you keep your, your clipper blades clean and well looked after. And if you look after your clippers, they will look after you. I'm always saying that, but it's true. If you look after your things, they, they really will look after you. Right, let's stop prattling. I'm gonna take her collar off and I'm gonna start by giving her a good spritz with a detangler and um, a good brush first. I should have taken her collar off to wash her, which was a foolish error. These are their Hicks and Hyde collars and they have the size extra small and I just love them. I love them, I love them. They are beautiful, beautiful quality leather. <laughs> um, I also have these, um, they're called fresh shears, I think, and they're very good um, as well. Right, everybody's barking and being um, noisy. Right, we're gonna use our spray. Somebody's walking past. And then just start giving her a really good brush first. We're going to use Penny as our model because Florence is just so wiggly. Um, right, the clippers with the um, blade cover the three mil one and I'm going to go down with the hair growth rather than against to start with because I just I want to go for an au natural look
Now you can see the Penny is the perfect, perfect model for this. But if you've got a dog that is um, not so obliging, it might be one for the professionals. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on and get these girls all looking smart with their spring, with their spring coats. This one's back from London with Gus and has given me a helping hand. Thanks, darling. We've just been hearing about the Imperial War Museum. You really liked it, didn't you? Yeah, it was really good. Really good day out. It's um, very well organised. It's not too vast that you can't sort of take it all in. There's a very, very good um, sort of cafe there which had um, healthy salads and things like that. Um, and um, yeah, it was all very well organised, not overcrowded, easy to get to. So um, it was very good. good. Out. Mm. And then he's come back to help me hold this one around her legs. Listen so to I my rest, the rest is history. A um, podcast. Podcast. Um, listening about the Titanic. And listening about so, the Titanic. Yeah. Simon loves the rest is history. Melvin Bragg. No, no. that's in our time. Who's no, um, Dominic and Tom? I can't remember that. I've got you into yes. podcasts, haven't I? Oh, it's brilliant. It's very good. So, they're very entertaining. Um, they do did very Gus well. listen to? He did. Well, playing with his iPad. <laughs> so, Pen is done. Florence isn't done. I haven't gone too severe, but just a good tidy up. And she's looking so much better. So now we need to tackle this one. But washing them, bathing them, brushing them and then using the master clip the clippers are amazing now you can also tell that i put my musto on so my musto is the most practical job for all of these things um because the hair can't get caught in the fibers um because it's that sort of that sort of fabric <laughs> where it doesn't happen so this is a job for a musto look at you with her <laughs> oh my loves Oh my loves, yes. Right, let's do you, hey? Right. Let's do you. Good morning. I have just done a cellulite dynamite with Lee. I love my workouts with Lee. I'm going to leave her link down below because she is simply the very best. It was a little bit of a hot, a hot, sweatier class than um, than some of them, but a really, really great way to start the week. And I definitely feel so much better when I'm back doing my workouts. So I was right. And I think because it's just been such a long, wet winter, I found it a real effort. But actually, for me, doing workouts gives me a spring in my step. So I'm definitely feeling good for doing it. So that is that is it. I don't get the same endorphin high from doing the horses that I do from workout. And actually, I feel if you start the day on a really positive, it's likely to be a better day. Does that help? It's my mindset. It helps me. Anyway, I have got a whole load of stock here that... Um, that you guys ordered. Your orders are amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. They will all be posted out today, but when you're watching this, hopefully they will have arrived and you'll be enjoying them. But it means the world to me when you order. So thank you very, very much. I am hugely, hugely grateful. Right, I need to put on my stinky mucking out trousers and coat and go and do the horses. But I just thought I'd jump on here and share that about how I feel because it might resonate with you. And sometimes we need to kick up the backside to do it. And I know that my kick up on the backside was just feeling really kind of sluggish, really ugh, clothes feeling a bit tight and a bit uncomfortable after uh, comfort eating for the last few months and I just needed a kick up the backside to to get moving and I always say whatever it is that works for you whether it's going for a bike ride whether it's yoga whether it's pilates whether it's a hot and sweaty class um, I love to mix it up so I do a bit of pilates I do a bit of the hot and sweaty stuff I do a lot of strength I've got my weights down there and round the corner strength for our age and getting older is so so important for our bone health and you know our overall wellness as as women in particular 
perimenopause and menopause, we really need to keep that strength up. It's so important. So, you know, just squats with weights, just even if it's just doing a little bit, like five, 10 minutes a day is better than nothing. So hopefully that is a positive reminder to you. Right, I need to go and do the horses. I just filmed a TikTok about spring summer shoes and I know I shared these with you and these with you last week but I thought I would talk a little bit now with you about other shoes that I have got. So these are my white Superga's that I live in. They're not that comfortable and it's a little bit of a knack walking in them and I actually went into Superga to buy another pair and I ended up not buying them because I was short on time and I wanted to try them on. I wasn't sh sure what size. I couldn't remember what size. I actually wear a 38 in those and I bought these in a 38 as well. I'm between sizes. I'm like a 38 to 39. I've actually got a size difference between my feet so I often pop an insole in. But I ended up these are so comfy. So I went into Blue Velvet. I didn't go back to to Superga. And I probably will buy another pair of these because I just love the look. They did say to me that you're not supposed to put them in the washing machine. Sometimes they can go yellow. And um, I, I put these in the washing machine, but it's like at your own risk. It can go wrong. I don't know if it's my washing machine. I don't know if it's the technique that I'm using. I put them in the wash just on a regular wash. I put a couple of white, old white towels in there to pad it out and I just use regular detergent. And then I think I dry them that way up, like rather than putting them on their toes. But um, I, I don't know if I've just been lucky or whether this pair's just really old so that they don't run. I literally have had them for six years. Yes, I have. I've had them for six years. You can actually see that I'm going through <laughs> the toe on that one. That's how long I've had them. And I've washed them so many times. These are by far and away my comfiest driving shoes that I have. And they're by Salt House England, but they're currently out of stock. They're made in Italy. They are so comfy. I've had this pair for over a year. And I will link them down below for you to to. Um, like check them out. I do have a discount code as well for Salt House. They are so comfy. So when they do come back in stock, I recommend you grab a pair if you love um, suede driving shoes because they are so, so, so comfy. I'm quite keen to get them in like an olive green as well. Then these are my beaten up ropey soles, which I lived in last year, last summer and the summer before. I wear them like slippers, but they're slippers that you can go out in, which is even better. And I've got these in numerous colours and um, I think I've got a discount code for ropey soles as well. So if I do, I'll leave it uh, linked here on the screen and in the description box. Then I always have a pair of Converse and I customise, oh, someone's coming in. Hang on, I'll be just a moment. Um, I customise my Converse on their website and these are just classic white with the red and blue and that's the back that I go for and I just find these really comfy, really easy just to throw on. And then a bit of a wild card that I customised. I don't know, maybe I'd have a glass of wine or something when I created these but I thought they were just really, really funky and fun. I haven't been brave enough to wear them yet, but I think I might wear them today because the weather is so revolting. I actually could do with something like this, but um, I love I love to have something slightly edgy in my wardrobe. Um, I've often had a pair of like gold. Oh, someone's left the door open and the dog has sneaked in. I often have like a pair of gold or like silver or slightly funky um, trainers, but um, these are my wild card ones for now but anyway I need to go and see what the children want uh, juggling juggling Easter holidays is tricky I spent pretty much most of yesterday being a mum taxi and ferrying them from here there and everywhere I am actually going to London this evening with Coco's best friend and her mum and dad and Si and I and we're going to 
um, that the girls are going to a party and we're going to a jazz evening. So actually, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, Paul Sai was in London last night. He didn't get back too late. Um, he had an early an early dinner with a work, uh, like a, a work dinner um, up in London and then drove back afterwards. So I'm tracking him back to London again for another night out. I thought, do you know what? Why not? My like motto is at the moment, you only live once, just do it. Just like, you know, obviously not being reckless, but you know, yes, we could just stay in and have um, have a night in. But actually, I think we have to seize these opportunities and, and try and enjoy things, I think. You know, dad dying has kind of made me realise more than ever. And, and a friend's husband died before Christmas. I didn't talk too much about it because I was really emotional about it and I would have cried. And he died, he's the same age as me. And, you know, it just puts things into perspective how precious life is. And we have to enjoy it as best we can and seize opportunities um, that come our way. So that is what I'm trying to do. Anyway, I'm going to go and sort children out and um, and cook them some food. The wind has died down a little bit, which is a huge relief. Colin's just having a pee, bless him. I've just said to him as I've turned him out, I said, darling, not much longer, not much longer of this. You'll be out. He's looking, he's looking at the grass thinking, please, mummy, let me out. We are forecast torrential rain in the next couple of days. So once that's through, hopefully we can turn out Oh, Colin, have you come to say hello to everybody? Everyone thought your escapades last week were hilarious. Nigel's fixed the fence, so there's been no more escaping. Has there? No. And you've had your supper and you've got a big hay net. And you can have a good leg stretch out here. And mummy promises, I promise, grass, grass soon, dear boy. <laughs> right, I need to go and get ready. I'm not sure what I'm going to get ready into, but actually our evening has got more exciting. The boys are coming too, as in the husbands. So um, we're going to a jazz evening in London, which seems very exciting. While well, the girls go to a party, um, which is a real treat, which I'm really looking forward to. I actually had to have a little power nap. I've been filming content for the members club for the majority of the day um, and sort of feeding children and doing mummy duties. And... Um, yeah, feeling a little tired, a little bit windswept. And um, yeah, need to go and get myself slightly more glammed up and not smelling of muck. But I've got Colin's table to, to tackle first. Cokes has just done some loading practice with Santana. Horses are having a day off today. And so I'm gonna crack on, finish my horsey duties. I've moved the feed over there so Colin can't get to them. We've just had a delivery of hay and straw to keep us going because um, I don't know how much longer we're going to need it. It's just miserable. I think I'd be able to turn them out during the day and then in at night um, for a little while until it's really dried out. But it's the joys of this weather. Everybody is finding it a challenge. And, um, you know, that's life. We're all in it together. So we've just got to put our best foot forward and tackle it and uh, put a smile on and just, yeah go forward with a gracious heart as I'm always saying rather than whinging I'm literally having to tell myself every day and I know I spoke to various friends and various um, of you guys who are finding it a bit of a struggle too and I've only got two horses I feel so sorry for the farmers the lambs are suffering the cows are suffering everybody's suffering it's uh challenging times but we've got sunshine right now which is the first today <laughs> look at my hair um the first today and gosh it makes such a difference when the sun shines. I think it just puts a smile immediately on my face. Anyhow, I'm gonna stop prattling and shovel muck. Look what I've got. They're not the finest specimen in all of Sussex, but my first asparagus of this year. Want... No, 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 darling, don't swear. <laughs> so I was getting a bramble out and grumbling and I'm trying to hide his builder's bum. Ooh, there's one in there. There's one in there. There's an asparagus in there, but there's also a bramble. Oh, oh, look. Well done, darling. That's another one. But look, we've got a bramble. I obviously didn't do my weeding very well. So I've just parked the beast back there. We have driven up to London. We've put the girls in the back, the dad's in the middle. They, um, they were wearing the same, the same coloured jumpers. It was like um, they'd, they'd 
coordinated their outfits and then Sarah and I sat in the front. I drove up, we chatted the whole way. Outside one of my old one of my old uh, local pubs, the sporting page. Um it's so, so much fun. The girls are so embarrassed about us insisted that we took a photo, not allowed to share it with anybody. So embarrassing, Mum. But they've gone off to their party and we are going out for supper at a favourite Italian and then jazz. Um, and the jazz mu musician sounds incredible. He's a doctor, an eye specialist. I think he's even a professor. So we're going to 606 uh, Jazz Club after, after our supper while the girls are partying and then I'm going to have a drink and so I can drive us back to Sussex so the dads can go in the front, the mum's in the middle and the girls in the back and it's perfect. So anyway, I couldn't share what I was wearing with you girls, with you guys because KK needed my assistance. So I've got a cream scarf, my orally silk blouse, this old jigsaw long coat and just some black jeans <laughs> and black boots. That's my outfit. I'm sorry, I couldn't share with you properly at home. But okay, can you did my assistant. Mummy, can you do this? Mummy, can you do that? Mummy, can you paint my nails? And um, so lovely to help her get ready. I can't believe my daughter is going to a party in London. It seems very grown up, but I was the same age as her when I went to my first party. So yes, makes me feel suddenly quite old. Now, I do know where I am going. Yes, I do know where I'm going. One more street down. It's quite difficult to park the beast in London. I went round in circles for a few times and then luckily my days of working um, in property up here, I know the back streets and where all of the parking is. So I managed to, to park easily. Anyway, I'm gonna stop chatting to you because there's a few people coming towards me that I think I'm a weirdo. <laughs> Good morning from a slightly uh, bleary-eyed me like half putting my makeup on but we had so much fun in London last night. We ended up not going to the jazz because we were having too much fun at dinner and we would have arrived too late, maybe missed it, maybe not maybe not been able to get in. So we thought, you know what, we're just going to stay put, stay put and enjoy, enjoy our um, our, our dinner and um, company and it was just really fun. The girls had a really fun time. We did get to bed quite late. So um, yeah, feeling a little, little tired this morning, but just so much fun. I wanted to jump on here and chat to you about a few products. Um, fake tan. Now my darling daughter loves, loves a bit of fake tan, but I have given her some help on applying. I am absolutely no expert. I don't fake tan my body. I am naturally quite olive skin anyway, so I I don't put anything on my body. I do on my face, we'll talk about that in a minute. But I used yesterday the Saint Tropez Self Tan Classic Bronzing Mousse, and this is excellent. Really, really, really good. I didn't do a very good job of washing my hands, so. <laughs> I've got a few few patchy bits in the shower this morning. I was like, oh, <laughs> lovely. So that was very good. Um, I went into Boots and I just went for like brands that I knew were good. I didn't really have time to do much research. But I also bought this, which is the Self Tan Purity Saint Tropez Face Mist Bronzing Water. I used this last night and it's really, really good. I just gave myself a little spritz and then let it sink in and went to bed and I woke up with a healthy glow. I have actually put my Trini London on and I've done part of my makeup and then I thought I'd jump on here and chat to you. The shower was dripping really badly. But if you are looking for a healthy natural glow, I can highly, highly recommend that. And if you want a bit of self tan and aren't sure what to get that i can highly recommend too you need to put it on with a mitt though and then i used a brush over coco's hands and feet just to give it like a more natural look really important that you exfoliate and moisturize and do all of that jazz and actually coco and i were talking about this yesterday and 
I don't think I've ever talked to you about this. It's the L'Occitane shower oil. It's the most dreamy, like luxurious shower ever. It's just so softening and gorgeous. And then I'm using at the moment this L'Occitane Shea Butter Rich Lotion. It is gorgeous. I use the hand cream, the Shea Butter hand cream all the time. But this is really, really dreamy. And I'm just trying to prep my skin for spring summer i um yeah i'm just trying to sort of exfoliate moisturize look after my skin i have definitely noticed that my skin is aging so i'm trying to give it a little bit of trc and i find that um a good moisturizer is really helpful and that one is delicious i love the l'occitane moisturizers i'm a big 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 fan of this and this so i use this in the morning and this at night um, pretty much the whole time. Um, I have been mixing it up actually with the Elemis moisturizer that they sent is currently by my bed. That is pretty dreamy as well. But I also bought this recently. I think the algorithm just kept like over the last year serving this um, brand to me, Jones Road. Jones Road is set up by the lady that set up Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown herself. And I just was intrigued. It's called Miracle Bar. I love the packaging. It's like this beautiful pink. And this is their Dusty Rose um, shade of Miracle Bar. And I wasn't exactly sure what to do with it, but I've actually put some on my lips. I've put some like as a highlighter up here. I'm not gonna put too much more on, like a little bit on my cheeks. And it's just really, really lovely. I think that's going to last quite a long time because it's quite a big pot. But I think it just gives a really kind of lovely, lovely glow. And then I was asked a few questions about jewellery from last week's video. So I think this is what I get asked most about my necklace and where I got it from. And actually, it was my grandmother's. And it is just such a special, special, sentimental piece that is um is i think my most treasured piece of jewelry and it's just really simple but i absolutely love it and i think i have worn it for oh my goodness how old am i um I'm nearly 44 i have worn it for like 24 years maybe longer i've lived in it for for such a long time and grandma actually had a diamond a diamond thing that went on here that's a little bit too big but I just I love I love this um and I just think it's simple and elegant and lovely and then the other question that I get asked a lot about is my signet ring and somebody asked last week about that so here is my signet ring can you see dotty fake time I need to focus um it's basically three Pelham horse bits and um, it's my family on mum's side family crest and the motto is unity is strength and so it's something that I really love wearing this was actually mum's mum's ring and it just feels very special that I have that one on I have my own one but when mum died I I started wearing her one which feels the right thing to do so those are my favourite piece of jewellery and then obviously these are my rings from my darling husband and then actually I get asked quite a lot over on TikTok about my watch. This is Michael Kors. This is a second watch I've had by Michael Kors and I live in it. In fact, it needs a good clean so I think I might clean it while it's off my wrist. Um, I actually don't really take it off very often. Um, I live in it, I sleep in it, I shower in it, I do all that jazz. Um, it is fine around the horses. Like it's, it's, I think, I don't know what the price point is now. I can't remember. I haven't looked for years. It's a couple of hundred pounds, I think, off the top of my head. Um, watch. Um, I don't, I do have an expensive watch but I don't, it's actually being repaired at the moment. I don't, I wear that just for, you know, really special occasions. But this is just a really great, uh, like everyday watch that is still elegant for going out, 
but it doesn't matter if anything were to happen. But it's also really robust, really robust. I mean, this watch and I have been through all sorts of things together. I do take it off to do a workout, um, but that's that's about it. So that is, um, yeah, my jewellery. And then my pearls. Again, I get asked a lot about my pearls. I just... Um, I just love them. These are button pearls and I get them from Pearls of the Orient and these are their bigger size. I think they're, they're 10 mil off the top of my head size. Um, I just find them classic. I find them just easy to wear. I've got tiny, tiny earlobes, like non-existent earlobes. And so I find like big danglies don't really suit me and they don't really work so um I just wear these little button pearls and I think button pearls are actually more elegant than the round ones I think they sit better and as you can see <laughs> tiny tiny earlobes and that's why actually I wear these backs which I just get um hang on let me get a clean one out because that is pretty grotty Um, I buy them in bulk. In fact, let's change them for a clean pair now. I buy them in bulk and they look like that. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? They've got like this disc on them. And I find that they sit much better in my ear. If I wear just normal earring backs, they tend to flop forward. Whereas with these backs, they sit in my earlobes much better and it holds the earring in position rather than dangling forward. So I have been using these backs for the last few years and it's made a huge difference. Um, I used to sleep in my pearl earrings, um, but now I use these backs. I don't sleep in them because they're actually not very comfy to sleep on, but they look a lot better. So that is like my everyday jewellery. And then this lovely, lovely Kylie who is in France made it for me. And this is giving me strength, determination, courage to tackle this year head on because I knew in January that this year was going to bring change and, and things. And then dad died as well, which was a surprise. Um, and so I need all the strength, determination, courage that this bracelet that lovely Kylie made me and it's um, crystals and it's just gorgeous. And so I, I don't tell Kylie, but I don't take that off either. I, it doesn't come off, it just stays put. And then I, these I bought from Hannah from Pop and Flow and actually Coco has been pinching them. So, and I, I did check on Hannah's website. I think these ones are out of stock, but I love them. So that's my little bracelet stash, stash, stack, stack that I'm wearing at the moment. But anyway, I just want to thank you guys so much, so, so, so much from your orders from my website of napkins and table runners and things like that. It's really exciting um, to get to get your orders. So a huge thank you. And then another huge thank you for everyone that has commented out and about on last week's video and Chick on the week's week video, the, the video, the week before the Easter video. It makes such a difference when you guys comment on the YouTube video and you just leave something in, in the comment box for me. It really helps the algorithm and I'm desperately trying to grow my YouTube channel. My numbers aren't brilliant on YouTube and I'm desperately trying to convince my husband that I can keep going with Ask Charlie and I can keep doing this. And I don't need to go and get a proper job. And darling, I am gonna make it, I absolutely promise. But I need your help and your support. So all of your comments and all of your likes and if you share my videos, it helps so much. It helps the algorithm and it helps other people find me. And that I would be so grateful of. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hate asking, but it is really important. And I want to I want to be able to continue doing what I do because I absolutely love it. And um, I love making content and I love sharing stuff with you guys. So um, 
thank you for your support. Now I need to put my mascara on, which you know I can't do when I'm talking to you because it will go everywhere because I've got to get up so close. I really think I need to go to the opticians and get my eyes checked. But we've got friends coming for supper tonight and I'm just going to do, they've got three sons, I'm just going to do a couple of roast chickens and um, yeah, so this week, why didn't we, why didn't we say chicken? Charlie's cooking roast chicken. So chicken, if you've got to the end of this week's video, I'm cooking a couple of roast chicken, chickens, some Hasselback potatoes, and I think some salad, and then, I don't know, whip something up for pudding. Coco has got a riding lesson, um, and the boys are playing cricket and all of that jazz. And tomorrow we are going away on an exciting adventure and I am taking you with us. So I'm really, really looking forward to that, which I will be sharing next week with you. So chicken, if you've got to the end of this week's video, I'm sending you so much love. Thank you for joining me and um, have a super, super weekend.